Okay, now we want to look at factoring trinomials where not everything is positive. I mean, after all, if everything is positive, then well, it's kind of boring, right? Let's spice things up a little bit. Let's try this guy. Let's do x squared minus 10x plus 21. Again, whenever we have anything that we want to factor, you always want to look for the greatest common factor first. Always. Now, is there anything that these three guys have in common? No. So, since they don't have anything in common, we recognize that it's a trinomial, and we understand that our, most of our trinomials, if they factor, will factor as the product of two binomials. Well, just like we saw before, the x squared is going to break down as x times x, but now we need to pause and think about what the signs are going to be. We know that we have to break down this positive 21. And in order to break down a positive number, your signs have to be the same. If you do positive times positive, that gives you a positive. Or a negative times a negative will also give you a positive. So you have to think, well, which one do I use? Should they both be positive or both be negative? This guy right here is going to be the clue. This tells you that you have to have negatives. So, if I do this, let's see if that's right. Is a negative times a negative equal to a positive? And the answer is yes. Well, now we need to think about how we're going to get that 10 from the 21. Look at the factors for 21. You've got 1 times 21, and you've got 3 times 7. You want these numbers to add up to give you 10. See, they already have opposites, or they already have negative signs. So if you combine a negative with a negative, you get an even larger negative number. So if I do a 1 and 21, that gives me 22. That's not going to work out. But the 3 and the 7 will be the correct response so I can get the 21 and get the negative 10. So we check this. x times x is x squared. Negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. Now we check the inside and outside pieces. Inside is a negative 3x, and outside is a negative 7x. So these guys combined, we get a negative 10x. So our answer is correct. Always, always check your factorization. All right. So a box this guy, give us some finality. Let's do another example. After all, that's why you're here watching videos, because you like to watch people do math. Or you're having a hard time going to sleep. Or maybe your kids are watching. Hello, kid. This is MathMan1024. I'm doing math just for you. Just for you. Because I care. Remember that, kids. MathMan1024 cares about you. x squared plus 2x minus 48. Is there a common factor for everything? No. Uh, you may think there is because, hey, these guys are both even, but you can't take anything out of this guy. So it's a trinomial. We expect it to factor as the product of two binomials. x squared, of course, is going to break down as x times x. And now you've got to look at your sign. Everything up to this point has had a positive, co or a positive constant term. This guy is negative. How do you multiply to get a negative number? Well, you have to have one positive and one negative. Now we've got to find numbers that will add up to give me a positive 2. But remember this. These guys have opposite signs. So when I look at the factors for 48, I'm going to be looking for those factors that are off by 2. And in order to add a positive and negative and still be positive, that means your larger number has to be positive. Now I'm going to list all the factors that we have for 48. We've got 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 6 and 8. Now remember, to add a positive and a negative and still be positive, the larger number must be the positive one. And since these have opposite signs, they need to be off by 2. 
these guys are off by 47, by 22, these guys are off by 13 and 8, right here. These guys are off by 2. And I said that the larger number needs to be the positive one, so let's see if that works out. If I put a positive 8 here, and a negative 6 here, is this going to be the correct combination? x times x is x squared, so that guy checks out. Positive 8 times negative 6 is a negative 48. That works out. Now we look at the inside and outside pieces. Inside is positive 8x, and the outside is negative 6x. Does that work? 8 minus 6 gives me a positive 2x. So not only do you need to make sure you've got the right number, but you also pay attention to your sign. It's a positive 2x. So we've got it. Does that make you feel good? I bet you can't wait to show all of your friends and family the cool math that you're doing. I think I've been too easy on you. It's time to up the ante a little bit. Let's try this guy. Let's do x squared minus 14x minus 15. Well, just like in the other problems, you're trying to figure out is there a common factor first and foremost? There is no common factor. Uh, these two guys have x's, but the last guy doesn't. So nothing's going to work out here. So we expect this guy to factor, if it does, as a product of two binomials. Well, you'd already know, you're going to x squared breaks down as x times x. Let's think back to your signs here. What do you know about signs in order to get a negative 15? Well, we know the signs have to be one positive and one negative. Yeah, but what about those factors for 15? Let's think about this. How can you have a positive and a negative that you add together and get a negative? Well, that means that the negative number has to be the larger of the two numbers. And since these guys have opposite signs, we need the difference of these two numbers to be 14. So let's look at the factors we have for 15. We have 1 and 15 and 3 and 5. Now let me tell you what a lot of students will forget about. They forget about this guy right here. They forget that any number can be factored as 1 in itself. And you know what? This just happens to be the guy that we're looking for. Because 1 and 15 have a difference of 14. And I said we wanted the larger number to be the negative one. Because if I make the larger guy negative, the 15 is negative, and the 1 is positive. Look what happens when we check our work. x times x is x squared. Positive 1 times negative 15 is negative 15. Inside is a plus 1x. Outside is negative 15x. And you see that the negative number is larger. You will keep the sign of that guy, so that's a negative 14x. So our answer is checked out. And what do you think? Is that good? Can we please do one more? You want to do another one? Yes. All right. One more. We've got room. All right, let's try another one. See if I can get you with the signs. How about negative x squared minus x plus 20? What is going to happen for this guy? What's the first thing that we always do when we're factoring? That's right. The first thing is always look for the greatest common factor. Is there something that goes into all of these guys? Now, at first glance, you may say no, but remember what we talked about in one of our other videos. If you lead with a negative, you want to make sure you factor out that negative. So the first thing we're going to do here is factor out a negative 1. And what that does is that, that makes the rest of the problem really easy for us. So if I 
factor out or divide out that negative 1. It gives me a positive x squared, a positive x, and that gives me a negative 20. Now if you're not sure about this, multiply the negative 1 back. Negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 20 is positive 20. So we've done everything correctly. Now we look at what we do here with this trinomial on the inside. Well, I've got a feeling that's just like all the other guys that we've seen so far. I bet it factors as a product of two binomials. How do you break down x squared? Well, the same way we've been doing it, x times x. What about your signs? This is the next important part. You've got to multiply to get a negative 20. Don't look up here. This is not what we're factoring now. We already took the negative 1 out, so now we're focused on the inside here. The negative. How do I multiply and get a negative? Well, that requires one positive and one negative. Now, you've got to find your factors for 20 that will give you a 1. Look at the factors for 20. You've got 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. You want to be able to add a positive and a negative and still be positive, which tells you that this guy must be the larger number. Yet, these guys have opposite signs, so their difference needs to be the one that's the understood coefficient of x. Which of these guys, well, which pair of factors has a difference of one? This guy. So be careful where you put these. We said the larger number has to be positive, so we end up with a positive here. So we need a positive 5 and a negative 4. So, not worrying about this negative one that's out in front, let's check our work. x times x is x squared. Positive 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. On the inside here, just when we're checking the inside part, positive 5x. On the outside is a negative 4x. And there's your positive 1x that you're supposed to have here. You may say, but what about the original guy? Well. When you put back in the negative, you'd get back out that negative x. So the complete factored form requires us to take out the negative 1 first, and then we factor the remaining trinomial.